This is the GIS Evening Report for Friday, July 12, 2024. I am Chrisanne Mitchell. In the headlines, Grenada to receive significant payout from CRIF following devastation by Hurricane Beryl. Details to this story and more after the break. The Grenada is to receive U.S. $44 million following the triggering of the Caribbean Catastrophe Risk Insurance Facility, CRIF, after a natural hazard to begin recovery efforts. As it stands, Grenada is the only country that has decided to take coverage of every insurance policy available from CRIF, which has made payouts since its establishment in 2007, totaling $274 million U.S. million to 17 member countries. Grenada and St. Lucia were congratulated for recognizing insurance coverage specifically designed for the fishery sector whose vulnerability is high. CRIF's CEO, Isaac Anthony, said that it is important for countries to protect their fishery sector. When that particular product was launched in the year uh, 2019, St. Lucia and Grenada were the first countries that took advantage of that opportunity. Unfortunately, the number still remains two, and I'm really hoping that now that there's been a clear demonstration that the product is indeed working, we will be able to get other countries to participate in this very important program. As you know, we have many large coastal communities, and they do the, a lot of people who live in those coastal communities derive their livelihood from fisheries. And obviously, we need to find ways and means of providing protection to them. Anthony explained that countries should consider getting full coverage of up to 150 million. Most countries are still well below where they ought to be in terms of coverage. CRIF, as, as, a, as an insurance company, and based on the business plan that would have been approved by our regulator, we are able to offer insurance coverage of up to $150 million per country per peril. So if a country came to CRIF to say, today and say, look, I want to have a policy where the coverage limit is $150 million, that is indeed possible. Which also means that if that policy triggers a full payout, potentially that country can receive a payout of $150 million within 14 days. Minister for Finance, Honorable Dennis Cornwall, made the call for other countries who are not on board with the CRIF to join as Grenada is now reaping the benefits following the passage of Hurricane Beryl. I'd also take the opportunity to ask countries in the region who have not yet been part of CRIF to come on board. You can see from the benefits that Grenada has now been receiving that has given us the impetus and the worry to continue doing what we have to do as a responsible government to make sure that we can maintain a system that allows us to benefit in the times of disaster. The Grenada Electricity Services Limited, Grenlec, and the National Water and Sewage Authority, Nawasa, are also set to receive payouts from the CRIF. These are the first payouts to electricity and water utilities in the Caribbean. Grenlec is receiving $9.3 million and Nawasa $2.2 million. The Ministry of Finance says there is still a significant financing gap that needs to be filled to be better able to rebuild and restore after Hurricane Beryl. Acting Permanent Secretary in the Ministry of Finance, Siobhan Britton, Telesford says although government has received millions in payouts, donations, pledges, and grants from partners and countries, the rebuilding process will require a lot more. Several key sectors were severely affected by the hurricane. P.S. Britain Telesford outlined some financial options av available to governments to deal with relief efforts, which include budgetary allocations, contingency funds, and risk insurance, among others. So in each budget, there is a provision in the Public Finance Management Act that says that we have to allocate roughly 2% of revenues to a contingency fund that will be used in the event that we have uh, an, uh, an occurrence, a shock, that we didn't budget for. So in our current budget, we have an allocation of roughly 18.6 million EC dollars, or US 6.9 6 million um, dollars that is available that we can tap into to respond immediately after uh, a crisis occurs. 
In addition, we do have obviously the entire budget that we can make some reallocations to as well if we, if we deem it necessary to do so. The layer above that that we have is the contingency fund that we hold with the Eastern Caribbean Central Bank. That fund is, is financed through receipts from our citizenship by investment program. Particularly, it is 10% of the receipts that we get through the National Transformation Fund um, that is transferred to ECCB for safekeeping. And if we do have an emergency, then we can tap into those funds. The balance on that account now stands at it at 31.6 million EC dollars or 11.7 million US dollars. So that's the balance as of, as of yesterday. The layer above that, in terms of our strategy, we have a facility with the World Bank. It's a development policy credit with a catastrophe de deferred drawdown option, or a CAD DDO. It is immediately available um, to, the, to the government in the amount of US $20 million. So this is already agreed with the bank. Um, in the days before the, the, the hurricane, we actually sent, already sent a letter to the bank. So those funds are, are available to the government immediately for our, our, our efforts here. So that's 20 million US or approximately 53.4 million EC dollars. And the final layer at the very top, uh, which we heard about earlier, is the CRIF parametric insurance, um, where we have various um, policies with CRIF, and we spoke to them at length um, earlier in the, in the press conference. So the payout that we received from that was um, 44.04 million US dollars or approximately 118 million EC dollars. Following the devastation caused by Hurricane Beryl on July 1st, government activated the Disaster Relief Fund to allow Grenadians in the diaspora, partners and locals to contribute towards the initiative. So far, over $1 million have been donated through wire transfers, direct deposits and online payments. The balance on that account currently stands at $1.88 million EC dollars of which we had wire transfers, electronic fund transfers, or direct deposits of 1.3 million approximately. And your contributions through the pay.gov GD platform amounted to about 0 0.58 million um, EC dollars, sorry. The balance in that account also includes some donations that we got from the People's Republic of China, for instance, of US 100,000, and um, the government of Angola um, donated uh, as well 250,000 EC dollars. Government will continue to engage partners and financial agencies to secure more financing towards rebuilding. Finance Minister Honorable Dennis Cornwall emphasized the need for his administration to be prudent and accountable in the process of relief and rebuilding. Kaiku alone would probably be much more than what Chris Priot is. And I do not want to talk about what is happening in the St. Patrick side of things because, again, we had significant damage in St. Patrick and St. Max and some parts of St. Andrews. So I'm saying all that to say, colleagues, people out there, do not think that is a lot of money that we have received and that is um, going to be sufficient or we can just go about willingly spending it on all sorts of things. We have to basically be prudent. We have to be able to manage what we have and to ensure that we can do what we need to do, even if we have to basically turn to other sources of um, financing to make sure we can rebuild Grenada, Carrico, and Peter Matnik in a bigger and better way. Take the opportunity to ask countries in the region who have not yet been part of CRIF to come on board. You can see from the benefits that Grenada has now been receiving, that has given us the impetus and the worry all to continue doing what we have to do as a responsible government to make sure that we can maintain a system that allows us to benefit in the times of disaster. The GIS Evening Report continues after this break. Prepare for hurricane, prepare for hurricane. Make sure you have your radio and your batteries to waterproof flashlight candles. We'll do things stuff, garbage back, first aid kit. Come on, people, make sure you have it. Clean water in a container and a hurricane plan. Hear me, no man. Hurricane damage is beyond your control. Surviving the aftermath is up to you. Have a hurricane plan. It can save your life and your family too. Prepare for hurricane. Your hair, prepare for hurricane. Welcome back. 
The Grenada Electricity Services Limited, Grenlec, says it is making significant progress in restoring electricity to its customers post-hurricane burial. As of Friday, July 12th, approximately 2% of Grenlec's over 58,000 customers on the mainland are without electricity. Efforts to restore the service is ongoing. Electrical engineer responsible for transmission and distribution, Nolan Peters, gave an update during a press briefing on Friday. At the moment, we have just under 2% without service. That is on mainland Grenada. We hope to cover the entire island in the coming days. So as of yesterday, we had just under 2%. Um, we continue to work this morning. We made significant progress um, throughout the night last night. With damage assessments being undertaken on the Sister Isles, Peters says that Grenlick is receiving assistance from electricity companies within the region. In Kariku, the, the island was severely impacted. Um, all our distribution lines um, were down. At the moment, we have power to, to Hillsborough, and we are working with the Electrical Inspectorate Department to, to connect customers as they are certified as um, passing the inspection and it is safe to do so. Um, on the Carillac front, we have assisting us linesmen from St. Lucia. They started working um, in the northern part in St. Patrick's yesterday. Um, today, we should um, get help from Domlek and Barbados Light and Power. And sometime next week, a team from TNTech will be arriving. Um, these, these teams, our plan is to send them to Karaku um, to help with the restoration there. Health Minister Honorable Philip Tellisford led a delegation of senior managers to the Sister Isles this week to assess infrastructural damage to health facilities. The team used the opportunity to highlight measures that will be implemented to support staff during this period. The tour of health facilities in Karakou and Pritik Marknik following the devastation caused by Hurricane Beryl is top priority for the ministry as it seeks to quickly restore health care delivery on the island. This for us was a, a critical meeting. Uh, we have planned a debriefing exercise for Tuesday of next week so that we can actually uh, sort of evaluate what has happened here and be able to respond strategically and methodically um, so that we, the rebuilding process that will happen um, following this will be one that we are proud of. So we are taking a very calculative approach towards how we respond to this situation. So far in our meetings, we recognize that um, emotions of our staff are, are running high, and we recognize the, that we have to give them all of the support that is needed, all of the social support that is needed uh, for, for, for themselves as employees within the Ministry of Health, as well as their families. He said governments will be adopting a systematic approach toward rebuilding to ensure structures are more resilient in the face of disasters. The hospital is closed, right? Um, we have, well right now as we speak, the, the tarpaulin is being uh, affixed to the roof. Um, there was some significant damage to the roof, of course, to the entire roof. Um, and so we are, we, are, we are treating with that as we speak, hopefully by the end of the day that roof should be you know, reasonably covered with, with tarpaulin. And we want to be able to at least return to some measure of normalcy at the hospital. So we're looking at that. Um, presently, the, this um, Hillsborough Medical Center is really uh, the, the, the facility in Karakou that, that offers service at the moment. And so um, this is why everybody's down here. And so we want to be able to offer some service. Again, rebuilding the hospital in Karakou has to be strategic. Um, when we remove the tarpaulin uh, with the intention to rebuild, it has to be properly, um, uh, properly administered because we don't want to just uh, put back the sheets on the roof. We must recognize uh, that the hospital, the location of the hospital is on one of the highest peaks 
in Kairiko. And should another event of this happen uh, next year, for example, God forbid, that we don't want them to end in the same situation. It's either the hospital receives a concrete roof or it's relocated. Because if we are dealing with patients, especially if they are critically ill, having to move them around in this hurricane, I mean, this thing has taught us that even the steel roofs is no excuse for a hurricane, right? So we have to uh, rebuild with all of these things in mind. We take our final break. More news when we return. Following its postponement as a result of Hurricane Beryl, Grenada will host the 47th regular meeting of the Conference of Heads of Government of the Caribbean Community from July 28th to 30th. The opening ceremony will include addresses by the CARICOM Secretary General, Dr. Carla Barnett, outgoing Chairman of CARICOM, His Excellency Dr. Mohammed Ifran Ali, and incoming CARICOM Chairman, Prime Minister Honorable Deacon Mitchell. Finally, the Ministry of Agriculture and Lands, Forestry and Marine Resources spent this week conducting assessments to determine the impact of hurricane barrel on the agriculture sector. Assessments were completed on government estates, propagation stations and with farmers in the four agricultural districts. With the impact of hurricane barrel, the sale of fertilizers and plants were halted as Maribor propagation station suffered extensive damage to its greenhouses. Seedling nurseries experienced notable losses on germplasm plots, including the breadfruit, boris sarasup, corn, and bananas. Chief agronomist Alison Haynes provides an update. We have not had significant damage to our buildings, infrastructure, our administrative offices. They're all, I am happy. Um, to report that they're all in good condition. They were mm -hmm. not severely damaged, sorry, by the hurricane. However, I cannot say the same for our fields, our crops. We had si significant damages there. We lost um, some of our breadfruit plants that um, are part of our breadfruit germplasm. We lost all of our planting, mm -hmm. entire planting plot as well as the banana plot, and we lost our conjunct plasm. They were severely affected by it. Um, if you look around, as I mentioned, we lost a lot of our mangoes. Um, they fell. And so at this point, we are in recovery mode. Haynes said the plan is to resume the sale of plants on Monday, 15th July. We open plan distribution just a few days before the hurricane on the 27th of June, and we saw quite a bit of plants. Um, we had at the opening of plan distribution only 26 applications in for just about uh, for just under 2,000, and so we produced over 52,000 plants and we had a significant, we had sufficient plants for the farmers based on the requests. Now with the hurricane, now with the present situation, farmers have lost their trees. We know that the demand will increase. Um, our technical officers are presently out in the field conducting the assessment and I believe that we will be guided going forward, the sale and the distribution of plants will be guided by the assessment. That's all for the GIS Evening Report for Friday, July 12th, 2024. I am Chris Ann Mitchell saying thank you for joining us.